love, light, and blessings. This is Shamanic Adwack Priestess here, and I wanted to make this video. I'm going to try my best not to make this too long of a video because my kids are home, and as anyone who has children, um, I've been working on and off today. I'm going to be working a little bit more tonight, so I'm going to, after this video, I'm going to get dinner together and, you know, put the kids to bed in a couple hours and then resume my night time appointments. But anyways, um, as anyone knows who has children, it's hard to keep them quiet for too long. So I'm going to try to make this video as quickly as possible. And um, I wanted to make this video at the right time. I wanted to have quiet. I wanted to um, kind of pray to the spirits um, so they can guide me and they can use me as a vessel to kind of share this story with you. Um, I have to be careful about certain things in the story that I'm not going to be able to share because we're not allowed to share certain things with people outside the tradition. But at the same time, the spirits want me to share this story. I've been feeling the spirits all day today, um, very dizzy, uh, almost feeling like I'm going to pass out. And no, it's not a medical thing. Um, I know when it's a medical thing. Um, when uh, voodoo spirits or santeria spirits want to possess somebody when they're around you. Believe me when I tell you their presence is so strong, you know when they're around and you know that it's not of the medical <laughs> situation. So don't think I'm having like a medical issue or something. No, no, no. This has to do more with um, spirits wanting me to give this message, okay? Because I actually feel better now that I'm gonna be making this video. Um, and I talked to the spirits prior to making this video just to make sure that they were okay with it. Not going to mention what spirits I use for said ritual, but they want me to share the experience with the ritual. First and foremost, I'm going to start with um, a very controversial topic, which has to do with the story of this video. Okay. Now, a lot of people have asked me about animal sacrifices. A lot of people think that in African traditional religion, people go around chopping the heads off animals, throwing the dead carcasses, ingesting blood, so on and so forth. They've seen videos on people who were let into a ritual, which most of the time those are fake, um, so on and so forth. Um, because a lot of people in the Caribbean, a lot of people that are from closed traditions do want to scare people off sometimes. Or people take advantage of people in poverty, kind of trying to sensationalize something. So, um, so on and so forth. But that's a video for another day, so on and so forth. We have to look at things from two perspectives. One, I can count on two hands how many times I've ever seen any type of animal being given to a spirit. Um, it's extreme situations. And we have to understand where these traditions come from. So today I'm going to be talking about voodoo because this is a ritual that I, a voodoo ritual that I hosted. And I, I want to share something about that. That's very important. Um, so um, sacrifice may be actually a wrong word because that's actually a term given to by outsiders. Um, when we look at Haiti, it's a way different atmosphere, country, government, economical situation than somebody who is in the United States, okay? Um, voodoo is very important because there's a saying in Haiti that says 80% Protestant or 80% Catholic and 100% voodoo. Why? Because Haiti was the first black country to actually win its revolution by the slave population revolting against their oppressors. They did a voodoo ritual to the ancestors by water that had alligators in it, and they offered black pigs to the war spirits. Ezuli Danto, which is the patron spirit or the patron saint of Haiti, was a participant in this ritual. And um, one of her favorite offerings is the black pig which uh, it was very common at that time in Haiti. And she was a war spirit. She literally cut her tongue out so that she would not reveal the secrets of the revolution. She participated in the revolution. A lot of Haitian voodoo spirits were actual real living people, like in New Orleans, Louisiana voodoo, which is a different tradition, of course. Um, Mary Laveau was an actual real person. And she later on in their tradition became a loa. 
So think of it in that way, okay? Um, unfortunately, Haiti, because it was the first black nation to actually win its independence, many different uh, people from different parts of the world have in, to this day been oppressing that country because they want them to be ashamed of their history. Voodoo is a very strong and powerful tradition because it's based on herbal knowledge. Voodoo is actually scientific. A voodoo sant, a mambo, a hugan, or a bokul, okay, has knowledge of herbs. They know how to cure. They know how to maybe make people sick. They know how to bless and they know how to hex, but not just in a magical sense, but in an actual scientific sense. They know the medicinal, the medicinal properties of herbs, and that's still very prevalent today. When it comes to animal sacrifices, again, that's a wrong term to say because in Haiti, they don't have supermarkets like we do, where you have pre-cut meats and the animals don't look like what they used to. In Haiti, most people that have meat or most people that sell meat is going to come from a farmer. It's, they have um, sustaining farming. Like think back in the days in Europe where uh, ancient pagans would live with their livestock and they will slaughter their meat and they will cook their food and they will eat it and they might possibly offer it to the god and goddesses of their tradition. That's the same mindset because remember, we live, those that live in the United States or live in first world conditions, industrialized nations, our experience with spirituality is different. And Haiti voodoo is a way of life. It's a way of life. Mawang sevi loas. Mawang sevi loas. I serve the loas. I serve the spirits. Okay. A lot of people in Haiti don't even call it voodoo. It's just a way of life. Voodoo is in everything, even in the government. Okay. And so... Um, they don't really, like, it's not really a sacrifice. Like sometimes they want to, a lot of the spirits, um, they like meat or something like that. So they'll, they'll give them fresh foods too. But when they're going to cook food and let's say they need something, what they'll do is because they're the farmer, they're the trained butchers in a Haitian voodoo ritual. You are not allowed to torture an animal. An animal is the honored guest. When it gives up its life, it's a sacred thing. This animal has lived a good life. It has lived amongst it's people. It has been given good food. It has been left to roam around freely. It's not an animal that grew up in a cage. Like the agriculture that we have in the United States, where some chickens and some cows don't even see the daylight. In Haiti, these animals are free roaming animals. They live amongst the people. They are a family member. And an animal is only sacrificed if it gives us permission to. There are certain signs that they are trained to look out for. There are certain things they do to do it as they are trained. It's only initiate people that are allowed to do it, that are trained to do it in the most humane way as to not torture that particular animal or that, well, animal. Um, so it's different. And a lot of the times it's to feed a community because voodoo is a communal practice. And sometimes when you have nothing else, and they're doing a ritual to heal the community because the elders are actually revealed by the community. The elders are actually chosen to look out for the other members of their society, spirituality, their, their community, their spiritual community, their house. And they feed the less fortunate with this meat. The animal is prayed over. Every single part of the animal is used. That is what people are talking about when they say animal sacrifices. It's very rarely that an animal is given to a spirit, okay, is given to a spirit and not eaten. Usually that's because somebody, somebody puts something on somebody and they're in a life and death situation and that animal is sacrificing its life for that person. These animals are raised to do this purpose and they're trying to give the best humane life as possible when they are to give their life for that spirit. So it's not this disgusting, uh, satanic, barbaric situation. I, I wanted to make that clear. Nobody's going around torturing anything. It is a sacred act. It is a very rare act. A lot of the times the spirits are given fruits. When we look at other parts of the world and we want to impose like vegetarianism or veganism, when you are part of a country that is 80% poverty, 
And you can only sustain farms and certain things only grow certain times of the year or you only have access to certain things. You eat what you can get. The average Haitian person might eat one or two meals a day. They don't have the luxury of saying, well, I'm just going to do this or that. They eat what they can, whatever is available to them. And so that in, in places like Haiti is seen as a luxury. There are people here in the United States that cannot afford to get a vegetable or a fruit or something like that. They eat what they can. So eating a certain way is not available to everybody. So we have to try to look at that and understand spirituality from a different perspective. Okay. Um, I left a lot of uh, my African traditional religious practices because of the things people were saying. And it wasn't until I got older and came back to my roots that I saw something different. A lot of voodoo is for healing. A lot of Santeria ritual is for healing. A lot of voodoo things are for healing. It's not all about cursing and hexing and sticking a pin here. And I'm, you know, it's not about that. You know what I mean? It's a way of life for a lot of people, um, especially in other parts of the world where that's the only hope they have is the spirits, the same very spirits that liberated a nation, okay? I recently had a dream to perform a certain ritual. That's all I'm going to say. And um, I was told what will be the offertories, offerings to be given to this said spirit. I didn't understand it then because I was like, why do I have to do that? You know, but I kind of listened to spirit. I got together with my house, my voodoo house, um, my mambos, my hugans, my people, my group of people. And we did a very big ritual a couple of weeks ago. That's why I wasn't on YouTube for three weeks. Um, they were, they were showing me things. They were showing me that one of my kids was in danger, but I'm like, this child looks perfectly fine. Other than him having some allergies, I've taken him to the doctor three different times. And the doctor says, oh, he's just having a viral upper respiratory infection. He's having allergies, so on and so forth. So I did the rituals like the spirits told me to do. Um, I did like a fet for a certain ritual, uh, spirits, three, group of three spirits, and got the cake and got the, the fruit offerings, and we did like a big party. Um, and then the next day was followed by rituals and offerings that were given to the spirits. That's all I'm going to say. I can't really um, share the details of the ritual because the Loas told me not to do that, but I can share that I did a ritual. So about that, they came on a Friday, they left on a Sunday. We ended it with going to church, which we usually do Catholic uh, mass. And then um, Monday came. So it was like the day after the, the ending of the ritual, because Sunday is the day of resting the spirits, thanking them, giving them offerings, going to church, so on and so forth. So um, when I went to um, take my son to school, something told me, Keep your eye on him, right? So I didn't book any readings. Like I booked a couple, but for some reason they were like, don't book anything in like the, like after 11. So I was like, okay. I did the ritual with faith. I was like, nothing's really happening, but the spirit said for me to do this. So I did it. And then um, my son, I, I get a phone call from the school and they said he collapsed. Um, I was freaking out. I'm a human being. And I was like, oh my God, this is what the Loas were trying to tell me. And... I met him, I met up with him at the local hospital. I told them, make sure you take him to the local hospital because I can get there quicker. So they did. They took him by, they rushed him from the school to the ambulance. Again, he was not really showing any signs he was that sick. I was thinking that I was going to go home, that it was just like a really bad asthma attack. We're going home. They do x-rays on my son and they told me that my son had pneumonia and a collapsed lung. Again, he was not showing signs of, of car, like of, of breathing or anything that bad, just... I was treating him occasionally for asthma and allergies because, again, I went to the doctor three times. What this revealed to me was two things. One, this was a spiritual attack against me to my son. Because one thing you have to know, when you are a practitioner of any type of spirituality that has to do with healing and things of that nature, you're going to have other jealous practitioners that try to hit you where it hurts the most. And what's going to hurt the most to a mother? Her children. But what they don't understand is when you have a very strong relationship with your spirits, your spirits, before you can even see anything, your spirits are going to let you know this is what they're doing to you. Spirits revealed to me who was doing this. That's why when I took him three times to the doctor because he was having bad allergies, the doctors did not foresee anything in any of the testing they did. There's no logical explanation why a doctor wouldn't see that. Because the doctor that I told, I took him to the doctor. I showed him the records. He was like, 
they didn't understand why they didn't see this in their testing. But for some reason that Monday, after said three days of rituals, they were able to see that something was wrong with him. So I stood with him in the hospital because I wasn't going anywhere. They gave me a bed and things of that nature. My daughter, who is somebody that I am training into the practices, was lighting candles and serving the spirits in my home. Because I would tell her, light a candle to this spirit, light a candle to that spirit, so on and so forth. By the second day that he was hospitalized, my son almost passed that second night. Okay? His oxygen was low, things of that nature, because my son was on respiratory stuff. Like, he was very sick. Okay? There were scary moments there. That night, my daughter lit. The next day, the doctor, my son was laughing, sitting up as if nothing happened. All of a sudden, by that third day, my son was recovering. Okay. I had canceled all my readings. Of course, I took time off. I, I told my clients I have a health issue with my child. Um, so that Tuesday, which is the day of one of the spirits that I did a, actually a couple of the spirits that I, actually the three spirits that I did the FETs for, that was the day that we lit the candle. And all of a sudden by Wednesday, my son was breathing on his own. By Thursday, the doctors were like, you know, I don't know how quick, I don't know why he's recovering so quickly, but if you're comfortable with it, we can send him home. So by Thursday evening, my son was home four days with a collapsed lung, with severe pneumonia, with not hardly being able to breathe because he got really sick that Monday night. The doctor said, had you wait another day, you might not even have your son here. The spirits looked out for me. I did the medical part. But I also did the spiritual part because I believe in the healing of mind, body, and soul. Okay, I believe in all of it. And so, um, the, pul the, the 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 pulmonary specialist that was treating my child at the hospital, which is um, he's very good in his field because I kind of like researched him and everything. By Thursday, when he let him go, he's like, "I want you to do another X-ray on Saturday because the second X-ray looks pretty bad." And I said, "Okay." So. By Saturday, we went. He was so concerned with my son that he met us at the hospital wanting to get the x-rays in his hands. Friday, I did a, a party for the spirits and thanked them for bringing my son home. Okay? And then on top of that, when we went Saturday, he calls me on the phone. And he tells me, these are his exact words, do you believe in a higher power? And I said, yes, I do. He said, because I'm going to tell you something in the over 20 years, I think he said 20 or 25. I don't want to make up a story. So I know it's over 20 years that I do know that I've been doing this. I have never seen anybody as sick as your son was when we got him on Monday. Heal so miraculously that he's 90% healed. That was by Saturday. Remember, he was hospitalized on a Monday with a completely collapsed lung. Having to have oxygen on him 24-7. And in four days, my son was walking out the hospital. That nobody would even know this child was sick. And then on top of that, the doctor tells me his lungs are 90% healed. Okay? I know for a fact that my spirits are real. That the laws are more than just archetypes, concepts, thoughts. These are real spirits that walk among us. The same voodoo spirits that liberated Haiti, the first black nation to ever be freed by slaves, by African slaves that were oppressed by their oppressors and killed and had a lifespan of one or two years. And they did rituals to the spirits and were able to liberate themselves. And this is why no matter how much they oppress the Haitians, Haiti will always rise up. And this is why right now Haiti is having a revolution that the news media is not even covering because they are tired of being oppressed by the government. When Monosada wanted to sit there and patent the seeds of Haiti to the farmers, they had a revolt and were able to say no to a mega billion dollar industry. They wanted to control the people. Haitian people will not be submissive. Haitian people will not be under the foot or the yoke of anybody. And this is why they demonize them a lot in media and try to portray Haiti as a poor country. They try to portray voodoo as a barbaric religion and practice. But voodoo saved my son. Santeria spirit saved my mother. These spirits are real. God is real. And the spirits are real. The spirits still walk among us. And this is why it's important 
to learn the ancient religions of our ancestors. Because no matter where part of the world you're from, all our ancestors have been through something. And those spirits help them get through those things. People used to do spirits even in Roman times to fight against their oppressors of other nations trying to come in and take over. The Celtics did it. The indigenous Native Americans did it. The Africans did it. And this is why I, I safeguard these secrets and these traditions. Voodoo has saved my family. Santeria de Orishas has saved my family in so many ways. It has changed my life. When I'm in a ritual, I feel these spirits within me and around me to the point where it's overwhelming. These are beautiful traditions, dances, the, the way that the drums speak to the spirits. Every song, there are drummers that play African drums in voodoo rituals or santeria rituals. They have to study for 10, 20 years just to perfectly do the rhythms so that the spirits can come down. There are signals that we do to the spirits. There are gestures. All these things are important. And this is why I've been a real big advocate when we try to put these spirits and new age practices or mix them into religions that are outside of their things. This is why I defend them so much because when you actually serve them in the purest and traditional form, you will see the power of these spirits in your everyday life. And yes, I thank the doctor that helped my son, but even he said, I don't know how he got healed like this. Because even with the medicine that I gave you, which he gave him the strongest grade of antibiotics, there's no logical explanation why your child is like this. And now, as I'm making this video, my son is 100% cured, as if his lung never collapsed. And I know for a fact that the spirits has something to do with that. They got him the right doctor. They were able to let him have an asthma attack so they could know there was something wrong with him. Things that spirits that were not allowed to see. So no matter how many enemies try to come against you, if you have that relationship with your spirits, there's no other witch, bruja, or anybody else that's going to be able to really do anything to you when you serve these spirits with your heart and your soul. Not when you need them only, but even just to thank them and respect them, and treat them as a family member. So don't ever look down on, oh, they give blood, or they they, they, they slaughter their own stuff, or they use this or that, or this or the other, because these are a lot of these practices are before a lot of our times. You may not understand something, but at least respect that. Not everybody practices the same, you know? Not everybody practices. We have more accessibility to certain things here than other places in the world. And understand that voodoo, in its pure sense, is a powerful religion in itself. It's a powerful practice. You don't have to mesh it with anything. Because even before slavery, there was voodoo. Even before slavery, there was Ifa, which most of the religious practices that they served the Orishas with came from. You don't need to measure with anything. It's a powerful system. These are powerful systems within themselves. You don't need to mix hoodoo with new age stuff because hoodoo in itself is a powerful practice. This is why Harriet Tubman was as powerful as she was. It is said in many circles that she practiced hoodoo. They didn't call it hoodoo, but she did. All she needed was a Bible and, and herbs, and she could do a powerful ritual. Much love, light, and blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. And to all my subscribers, Ashe, Aji, Bobo. I love you. Haiti, may you continue to rise up. May you continue to fight for your revolution. I am a proud Haitian woman on the part of my mother and my grandfather. Puerto Rico, rise up. I'm a proud Puerto Rican for my father's side. Much love, light, and blessings. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and until the next video, guys. Much love and peace. Bye.